In this video, we show how an insecure system can be exploited and how system hardening prevents such attacks. We have prepared a simple scenario for this. An attacker has access to the company network, but without any other rights. It uses the outdated SMBV1 protocol. This has been known to be insecure for years. We compare two cases, an unhardened and a hardened domain controller. The attacker's goal is to open a remote shell with administrative rights. Even though he has neither user accounts nor privileges on this system, this test clearly shows how easy it is to carry out attacks with tools such as Kali Linux. Kali Linux offers all the necessary tools. These can often be used without much technical knowledge. We are on the attacker's system. An attacker's first step is often to analyze the target system to find out more about the running services and possible vulnerabilities. To do this, they use the Nmap tool, which is pre-installed in Kali Linux. It is used for network and port analysis. The attacker uses it to scan the domain controller. The results of the scan give him important information about the configuration of the system and possible vulnerabilities. The result shows us open ports and the services running on them. Port 445, which is used for SMB, the server message block protocol, is particularly noticeable. Here we can see that the Microsoft DS service is active. This service indicates that SMB is available in a specific version. The attacker knows that he can exploit this service for an attack. SMBv1 in particular has become known for its vulnerabilities. To make sure that the target system is actually vulnerable, the attacker executes another Nmap script. A special command is used to check port 445 on the target system for vulnerability to the Eternal Blue exploit. The result shows the attacker whether he can exploit the vulnerability. The script confirms that the target system is vulnerable. It therefore clearly outputs the status vulnerable. The risk factor is also specified as high. Now the attacker prepares the attack. He uses the Metasploit framework for this. Metasploit is a well-known platform that was specially developed for penetration tests and exploits. Numerous exploits can be selected and used from this database. The attacker downloads the corresponding exploit. He then specifies the system from which he wants to control the remote shell. And he specifies the system on which the remote shell is to be installed. Once these settings have been made, the attack can be carried out. We now see that a Metapreta shell opens. Metapreta is a powerful payload that allows the attacker to remotely control the target system, execute various commands, and extract information. Apparently, the attack was successful. A Windows shell and a PowerShell session can be opened, a good sign for the attacker. Now we compare the hostname of the target system with the one provided by the remote shell. We can see that they are identical. What privileges does the attacker now have? We check this with the who am I command. The result? The attacker has opened a remote shell with the highest system rights on the most critical system of a company. In the example just shown, we have seen how easy it is to open a remote shell with administrative rights on an unhardened system. What happens if the domain controller has been hardened accordingly? Let's take a look at the second scenario. We will harden the domain controller in advance by deactivating the SMBv1 protocol. We do this using a PowerShell command. The command completely removes the SMBv1 protocol from the system. After executing this measure, the domain controller must be restarted so that the changes take effect and SMBv1 is completely deactivated. 
Now, let's take a look at how the attacker uses the same tools and commands to analyze the target system. We switch to the Kali Linux system and perform another analysis. The result? We see open ports again. But this time, the scan cannot clearly tell whether the Microsoft service is running on port 445. The first result is therefore bad for the attacker. He therefore executes the second command. This scans the system. Again, the result is different. This time, there is no positive response. The scan therefore shows that the target system may not be vulnerable to this exploit. But the attacker does not give up and continues. This time, there is a direct message that no remote shell can be opened. The attack has therefore failed. The domain controller has not been compromised. This clearly shows the success of system hardening. It is effective against attacks that want to exploit the SMB v1 vulnerability. Important. The SMB v1 vulnerability is just one of many that should be eliminated preventively in IT systems. Because every closed security gap reduces the attack surface, and thus the risk of systems being compromised. The following therefore applies to effective and sustainable system hardening. All potential attack vectors must be permanently and consistently reduced. However, this effort can hardly be accomplished manually. The solution? Automation. With hardening tools such as Enforce Administrator, this not only makes system hardening more efficient, but also noticeably reduces the workload for IT managers and the SOC team. Simple, secure, sustainable. What more could you want?